The mighty Madeira River is the Amazon's largest and most important tributary. Now it's being dammed to generate hydroelectric power. This was once a mountain with a waterfall. Now a power station is being built. Of 44 planned turbines, three are already in operation. Since the huge floodgates have been regulating the water flow, everything has changed. That's certainly true in Porto Ferro. The city, just seven kilometers downriver, has more than 400,000 inhabitants. Canoe maker Francisco de Souza has lived in this district on the banks of the Madeira for almost 30 years. He says that just a few months ago there were gardens here with tall trees. Now he tells us the entire riverbank is a stony wasteland. It had to be raised and shored up with rubble because the river has suddenly become unpredictable. I'm no engineer, but I grew up by this river and I think I understand it much better than they do. They've never dealt with currents like this. This river has a strong current that carries a lot of flotsam and sand along with it. The fact that it's now washed away our houses and gardens is linked with this hydropower plant. They deny it, but it's obviously true. Nothing like this has ever happened here before. The water did indeed rush in with full force after the floodgates were opened. As the first houses collapsed, action had to be taken quickly. 600 people were evacuated. For more than five months, they've been living in temporary quarters. The dam operator is covering the costs, but nobody knows what will happen next or whether they'll receive compensation. For most of them, returning is not an option. The damage was too great. Sousa says the company is using brochures like these to whitewash events, showing how it saved an entire district from flooding and how good it looks now. But he says the paint on the houses isn't real and the images have been manipulated. The power company Santo Antonio Energia stresses its principles of sustainability. Faced with the erosion damage, it was slow to accept responsibility, calling it a natural phenomenon. Why? We needed time until our project managers had a chance to assess the situation and evaluate it properly. Our model takes into account the dam's influence only within a range of a kilometre downriver of it. So we hadn't anticipated this unexpected situation and couldn't respond quickly. New electricity pylons dot the landscape. Most of the new power is being transmitted to the industrialised south of the country passing by people like these two fish farmers. We go out with them onto the artificial lake behind the dam. The water is still rising. Some of the vegetation was simply submerged. Most of the trees are now rotting in the water. One of the farmers tells us this side was once a riverbank and all forested. It's hard to imagine where the riverbed used to be. The two show us what was once their fish farm. The enclosures have been empty for four months. Here the river is almost a stagnant backwater now. Raimundo Bachelar says it contains too little oxygen and that the plants and trees that were cut down weren't removed before the water flooded in. When the water rose, it all went very fast. It didn't make the fish sick at the beginning. It's not that two or three fish died at first, then we could have done something. But no, they all died at once, almost immediately. When we arrived, the breeding enclosures were white from the fish floating on the surface. They lost more than 80 tons of fish, and here too, nobody knows what's going to happen. Most fishermen in the region say the lake has far fewer fish now. The dam operator disputes that, citing various studies. 
Philip Fernside, a renowned Amazon researcher, thinks the fisherman's assessment is realistic. For years, he's been studying the impact of building dams in tropical climates. The lower layer of water in the artificial lake no longer has any oxygen. That means all the roots, leaves and other organic matter decaying there aren't releasing carbon dioxide because they aren't getting any oxygen. They're releasing methane. Methane contributes much more to the greenhouse effect pro ton than carbon. Methane gets into the air both in bubbles on the water's surface and when the water passes through the turbines. That's never taken into account. But it contributes significantly to global warming. There's nothing green about this energy. The area around the dam construction site will be greener, at least visually. The power company plans to plant seedlings on 600 hectares. We ask again how this power is green. The energy is considered clean because the process of generating it doesn't pollute the environment. There's an impact on nature, I'll admit, but the power generation is clean. The Brazilian government is sticking to that view and promoting the construction of more huge dams. 30 of them in the Amazon region alone.